Hi, I'm Tom Gustafson, Computer Information Systems Instructor at Lake Superior College in Duluth, Minnesota. Welcome to this third video in a series on imaging a Windows 7 computer. In our first video, we answered this question, what is, a com what is computer imaging? It's creating a complete image of a Windows installation, the operating system drivers, application settings. Using an ImageX utility works at the command line when you boot from Windows PE and you create a WIM file, which is the file that contains this complete image of the system. That file then can be used to distribute Windows to multiple systems. And what we do is we generalize the system before we do this to remove all unique information from that installation, like the security identifier, computer name, things of that sort. We're using the Windows 7 Enterprise Evaluation to do this. You can use any uh, edition of Windows that you prefer, but the link is on your screen there. It's a free 90-day evaluation that can be extended up to 180 days. And the Windows Automated Installation Kit, which is a free download from Microsoft. The steps to image a computer are as follows. We've already covered the first two, install and prepare a Windows image. You can do any kind of installation you want and then configure the system the way you want it and then run the sysprep program to generalize it and prepare it for distribution. Download the Windows Automated Installation Kit and install it. We've done that already. And in this video, we're going to talk about the creating a Windows PE ISO file or a CD so you can boot, do your imaging, and uh, run this program that we call ImageX. We'll cover the other uh, steps in a future video. We already talked about the steps uh, needed to install and prepare a Windows image using the sysprep program in a previous video, as well as how to download the Windows Automated Installation Kit and where you see that in the Start menu. So let's talk about how to create a Windows PE boot ISO file or CD. This is something you do using the Windows Automated Installation Kit. Uh, which is found in Start All Programs, WAIK, and there's an option to go to the t Deployment Tools command prompt, which simply brings you to a directory on the system in the command prompt that has the tools that we need. And the first command we're going to use is this one right here to copy these Windows PE files, um, and we're going to copy the files for a certain architecture. We're going to choose the x86 or the 32-bit architecture, but you can also do 64-bit if you want to do AMD 64 or Intel architecture 64. And here's the command that we'll use. We'll just copy, um, use a command called copype.cmd. The x86 here indicates that we're copying the files for the 32-bit architecture, and this is the source desti or, or the destination, I'm sorry, directory for our files. We'll, we'll name it winpe underscore x86. That's a directory that doesn't exist, and the copy pe command will create it for us. So let's jump over here to our Windows 7 installation, and you'll see that we have the Windows Automated Installation Kit installed here, and we'll just open up the Deployment Tools command prompt. It's not necessary here, but it's a good idea when you go to the command prompt to choose Run as Administrator, just in case you're going to run something that requires administrative privileges. What we'll do then, uh, in this PE Tools directory, if you do a DIR, you'll notice that there's the copy pe.cmd file right there. It's uh, um, all ready to go for us, so let's run copy pe pe.cmd will indicate the x86 architecture, and we want to copy the files in this directory that we will create called winpe underscore x86. And it just goes ahead and copies the necessary files and directories to that location. Uh, notice our directory was changed to winpe x86 as well, so we can do a dir here and see that this etfsboot.com file was created here. Remember that because we will use it shortly. An ISO directory was created. Remember that because we will refer to that as well. Uh, a mount directory and we will also be using this winpe.wim file which is a Windows image of a Windows PE boot system. So the copy PE command worked fine for us. Now let's go back to our instructions here and let's talk about the next step. 
We're now, we now want to copy two files to the WinPE build directory, so they will be included in our ISO file. One of them is the ImageX program, ImageX.exe. That's the utility we'll be using to create and, and uh, distribute our images, and it's not included by default uh, in the image when you do copy PE. So we need that, and we also want to copy the WinPE.wim file. That one's needed to make this thing bootable. Um, if you don't copy this file, your ISO or CD will not boot properly. It won't boot at all, in fact. So we need that file as well. So our first command is going to be kind of a long one here. It's a copy command. It only has two arguments, but the first, in quotation marks here, this will all be on one line, is the source file. It's the complete path to the imagex.exe program, which is in Windows AIK tools x86 imagex.exe. The second argument is our destination, which is the ISO directory inside of WinPE underscore x86. So let's go there and run this command. So we're going to copy c colon backslash program files. The upper and lower case don't matter here, but we're going to do it anyway. And it's in the Windows AIK directory, and it's in the Tools directory, x86, and the name of the file is imagex.exe. And then the destination is going to be c colon backslash win pe underscore x86 backslash and we want it in the ISO folder because everything in the ISO folder is going to be um, put in the, the ISO file when we create it. That's called our build directory. And that file is copied properly. Very good. So our next job then is to um, go back here to our PowerPoint and look at the command we need to copy the winpe.wim file. So let's uh, look at this command. It's another copy command, and winpe.wim is, is in the winpex86 directory. That's the source file. The destination is similar to the previous one. It's going to go in winpex86 in the ISO folder, but there's a subdirectory underneath it called sources, and it's going to be in uh, boot.wim. So we're copying the file, but we're also changing its name to boot.wim. So that command will give us the file we need with the right file name in the right location so that this CD will be bootable. So let's go back here and let's give it a run. Oops, excuse me. We're going to copy c colon backslash winpe underscore x86 backslash winpe.wim. That's our source file. And we want to copy it to the winpe underscore x86 backslash iso directory, sources directory, and we want to call it boot.wim. And this is a little bigger, bit bigger file. It takes a little bit longer to copy, but there it is. And we could have done both of these commands from the graphical interface by dragging and dropping the files as well. It didn't have to be done from the command line, but it's kind of fun to do from the command line. OK, so we have that job done. We've now copied the two files that we need, um, imagex.exe and winpe.wim, and they're in the correct locations. Now we're ready to create an ISO file of the Windows PE CD. So the command we use to do this is right here, OSCDIMG. That command will create an ISO file for us. We're going to give it the dash n parameter. That argument means we want to use long file names. This argument right here, the dash BC, is giving the path to this ETFS boot.com file. That is the location of the El Torito boot sector file, and that's needed to make this disk bootable. The next is our source um, file. Um, it's c colon winpex86 backslash iso, and 
what we want to do is we're taking every file in that ISO directory and we're making this ISO file out of it. It's going to be in WinPEX86 and the name of the file is going to be WinPEX86.ISO. So we're taking all of the uh, files in this ISO directory and we're creating an ISO file in the WinPEX86 that consists of all those files and it's going to be bootable as well. So let's give that a try. Our command is OSCDIM G and a dash N and dash B C colon backslash WinPE underscore x86. That's the location of this file, which is ETFS boot. Dot com. That's the El Trito boot sector file. C colon backslash WinPE underscore x x86 backslash ISO. That's our source directory. That's where all the files reside that we want put into this ISO file. And the destination is WinPE underscore x86 backslash WinPE underscore x86 dot ISO. So we're going to create this ISO file inside the WinPE x86 directory. Press enter and it says it's writing 18 files and off it goes. It just takes a short time to create this ISO file. So now if we do a DIR, oops, DIR, there's our WinPE x86 dot ISO file right there. Notice it's 142 megabytes in size. So it created that pretty big file pretty quickly. Let's open up our graphical interface here and in Windows Explorer we'll go to C and we'll find our WinPEX86 and there's WinPEX86.ISO. That's the file that we now can use as a bootable file to boot to the WinPE environment. We have a couple choices now. We can use the ISO file to boot from that file or we can burn it to a CD and boot from the CD depending on your situation. What I'm going to do then is copy this WinPE x86 ISO file to a location where my physical computer can access it. Right now it's in my virtual machine. I need it on my physical computer so that I can mount it as a drive on a virtual machine. It needs to be on my computer's hard drive, on a USB flash drive, on a USB removable hard disk, somewhere where VMware Workstation can mount it as an ISO file. It can't be inside of a virtual machine for me to do that. So watch closely what I do here. I'm going to close out my PowerPoint presentation and I'm going to take this virtual machine then, or this, I'm sorry, take this ISO file and I'm going to drag and drop it to the desktop of my virtual machine and it will copy from virtual machine to the physical machine. Now that's a great thing to be able to do and you have to have the VMware tools installed for that to work, but it copies it then from one computer to the other, from a virtual computer to a physical computer. Now that it's down here on my physical computer, watch what I can do on my virtual machine. I'll go to VM, I'll go to settings, my CD DVD drive, and now um, make sure right up here that it is connected because sometimes this box will be de unselected and browse to your uh, WinPE x86 on your desktop, make sure it's connected, click OK and now you have that ISO file on your physical machine connected to the DVD drive on your computer, on your virtual computer. If I go back here to computer and open up my DVD drive then I should see that I have that system um, that drive in and now I can reboot my system and reboot it to Windows PE. So let's reboot this system and we will see then that we now have the bootable CD in there and it will ask us to press any key to boot from the CD and we will boot into Windows PE. I will pause the video while this happens. And there we are now booted into Windows PE and we are ready to image this computer. We'll do that in the next video.